Greetings, my sniffs. Today, I'm going to have a rundown of all of the weapons you can get in Therapt. And what they're called, and what they do. First one here. Who can forget a good old Agrian weapon? Yeah, by the Agrians. Whoops, I forgot about that. There. Aerot Eiter 1. An Agrian Carbine Plasma Rifle. This is the most standard ranged offensive tool from the Agrian arsenal. And... Let me see how it works. This is how it looks like. Yeah, a little nice grate there for cooling. It shoots it up there. Through. To cool this. And these are wave shapers. To make sure that the bullet goes straight. And this is where you reload it. Kinda silly, in it? Because it looks like it's bolted on, but it's not. <laughs> and this is how it shoots. And it is dead accurate. As you can see on there. Dead center. But it doesn't do much damage. Because. Yeah. <laughs> kind of negligent damage. And next up is something that does more damage. And there's also a plasma rifle. This is the TRN PTSD ATS, a powerful and effective PTSD assault rifle that's adopted by the TRN. Since it is not a civilian weapon, it is one of the main offensive weapons of the Terahiptian militaries, making it publicly unavailable. And this is how it looks like. Same cooler in the front. It doesn't have a wave shaper, because it pre-shapes it with this big shroud here. A little tactical railing. <laughs> and it shoots faster and has bullets that make a little bit more damage. It's also dead accurate. Well, almost. No, it is dead accurate. Oh, cool. And then we have something that is completely different from the other two. Something that is just not accurate at all. The Shakar 17. A long barreled assault rifle created by the Alatiba. Like, they, yeah, they're basically given shit weapons to just, you know, terrorize everybody. They're not good at killing, but they're good at scaring you. That's the point of it. And how it works is that it uses kind of like a half-drum magazine. The bullets start up there, can be reloaded, and it goes down and then makes a U-turn upwards and then go a little bit sideways into the chamber. And that is a screw or dial in order to, you know, tense it up or loosen it a little bit if it gets jammed. Yeah, that is the magazine. You just click it up. And this is how it fires. Prepare yourself for shit. <coughs> has stupid recoil. So just So yeah, now I hit above the aim. But 
what? It is pretty good sniping gun. And it uses 10 millimeter iridium shells. Because iridium is very common on Terrypt and it's like twice as dense as lead. So being shot with this is like being shot with a shotgun. Pretty neat stuff. And here we have another one. Yeah, cooling, you know what gun this is. Tossler Tigria M2. A carbine plasma rifle. It doesn't have any description, but this is used by the Anodians, you know, as a military practice weapon. Not as much as practice, but it is used for practice, and it's a pretty good weapon after all. But it looks a little bit clunky, and this is how it fires. See? Steam. And I can't shoot until it cools down completely. And then I can start mayhem again. Pretty neato. And then here, another one. TLF PTSD G1, a compact PTSD rifle made by the Terrorhipped Law Force Agency. So this one is using a shell that is like both plasma and then a PTSD. Plasma suspended uh, PT. Plasma tipped the dart or something yeah it encapsulates a dart of white hot metal in a shell of plasma to increase accuracy and damage so it's kind of like a heat, tiny heat shell or something this is what it looks like there's no magazine because you just you know you just recharge it through that port right there or I actually have no idea because I made these guns so long time ago that my designs I lost, I forgot. Alright, this is how it shoots. And it's pretty short, good round corners. It's not really that accurate because of that plasma shell tip. It kind of veers off from its path a bit, and the fact that it's a shorter gun. See? And it does some pretty mean damage, too. <laughs> that blue barrel's going to be seeing lots of abuse, <clears throat> especially when it comes to this one. Everybody's favorite, the Posmer HC40, a vintage 40mm handheld cannon. And you're like, what? Doesn't your arm get like, like shoulder dislodged when you shoot this thing? Well, the thing is, this is made for thillions, not humans. Or bithillions, four thillions. Because a human can't really do much with this, you know, effectively. Stupid gun, get out of the way! Whatever. <laughs> yep. That is the... What is it called? Yeah, it's, it has gas in it, or oil. It's a thing. And that is the... You know, the lever... To reload and this one is a little bit tilted backwards that 
ricochets the expanded shell away in that direction. And this is just a plate to protect yourself from the backwards motion of the recoil. And this is how it fires. And it has another type of ammunition. When you press 2, and you saw the yellow ring there, that means that it's a high explosive. Pretty good accuracy. And everybody loves to use the damn thing in the tight corners of Acritura. They're like, ooh, nice cannon! And then they shoot at an enemy at point-blank range, and then this is what happens to them. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> and here is something that you can also find when you explore Acritirida a little bit more. The Posmer 10C R. R stands for rotary. A rapid firing rotary machine gun. This model is specifically built for dire engagements where firepower is necessary for survival. But its price and excessive maintenance makes it an unpopular weapon for commoners. And yeah. Yeah, it has two in a rotating barrel, and it's electrically driven by this motor up here. It's kind of like a like a starter motor. And yeah, and it is it is pretty good for short bursts, like three to one. Yeah, you need to spin it up. see it's starting to heat up but if you hold down the button yeah N not a good one but it does crazy damage if you know how to use it so you have to aim down in order to hit that is how you use it a pretty cool weapon that everybody likes. And here's one that not many know about, including me. I had to ask people to know where I could find this one. It was in a desert, I believe. This is the classic Posmer 10C, not the Posmer 10CR. A short barreled assault rifle. And this one is pretty good because it uses that infamous iridium. Uh, cannon, I mean, I mean, at that iridium shell. And it's pretty reliable, does, you know, the same damage as those infamous shells, iridium shells. A reliable gun. And now we come to something interesting here. Ah, oh, what is this? Oh, those lights! Yes, it's a Mevnav gun! The Mevnav MRC HG. I think the HG stands for... Ah, what was it? Mercury. Yeah, they shoot mercury plasma at you. Not necessarily the nicest thing to do. Lots of war crimes. A small repeating firearm from the most infamous faction on Territ. It fires a jet of molten, molten metal shrouded in a shell of mercury plasma. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty big deal. And this is how it looks like on close up. Kind of funny trigger guard though. <laughs> Yeah, you remember that sound. 
from those pesky Mevnab drones. If you hear this, then you know that you need to be careful. It's a pretty good spread. And this one does about as much damage as uh, that one right there. But I guess that it does a little bit more. Ah, yes, your good old bug standard SMG submachine gun. You can tell because this has been designed by humans coming to Terrict. Yeah, pretty cool. The Metis Car 05 oh, 5. Ah. A rare but popular example of a Terhyptian submachine gun. This model got developed after being inspired by the submachine guns on Earth. The, the only difference being the 10mm semi iridium round that it fires. Oh, it's Auridium, not Iridium. And the reason why it's called semi is because the bullets are shorter. Yeah, so it doesn't go as fast or pack as much of a punch. But the reason for that is that you can just shoot really fast. Yeah, I've defeated a Mevnab Knight with this just by going back into the engines and just unloading everything. A very good weapon. And, of course, who can forget the shotties? A Katuvari MD. An automatic shotgun that is practically given out for free due to the harsh environment of Terrypt. It, it is reliable and effective to bring down close quarters assailants with its specific tri-shot ammunition. Well, three pellets. S three 10 millimeter pellets of really heavy metal coming at you. And it has a drum of six shots right there. A drum of six. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty mean looking thing. And that is, f and that is for carry, basically carrying it around like a suitcase or something. <laughs> pretty neat design. And it does shit tons of damage close up, of course. Very <laughs> noise. And here? People like really fast firing guns. This looks, you know, very typical World War I style. <laughs> Drum and the water cooled. Yeah, fill it up there, and the steam goes out from there. Well, pressure. It doesn't really get that hot, but yeah. The Fawcett Alton. A widespread Jadish machine gun that has served in several wars. It is water-cooled and has a high rate of fire. It is valued for its effectiveness as a point defense weapon for military bases and on large war vessels. Yeah, like the roll ship. And check out the speed. A very tight spread. And 
it just doesn't overheat. A pretty devastating weapon. And one of my favorites. The Dasman SR2. A powerful and effective projectile assault rifle that's adopted by Dasman. Since it is not a civilian weapon, it is one of the main offensive weapons of the Terahyptian militaries, making it publicly unavailable. And of course, it is a very, very mean gun. Nail precision accuracy has a really good sense of damage with those infamous Auridium shells. And it has, like, almost no recoil. <laughs> it does really good damage, and it's very accurate. Sounds good too. And yes! The Bleem Karabin, the BK. A unique weapon designed by the Slavuiks. It's designed for to fire its own designed ammunition, designated ammunition, called Bleems. Metal discs that deform into projectiles when the bolt impacts behind them and detonates a separate charge. And how that works is as you can see there. You see those little teeth that holds the metal disc in place? And then the hammer comes forward with a charge and it smashes against it and just fires it off. And its design is, you know, obviously too. That is not the only thing. This is actually a sickle that you can detach with a handle there, and this is also a hammer that you can detach with a handle telescoped inside of it. So if you run out of ammunition, unbolt this and use it as a, you know, as a weapon that you can slice someone's head off or something, or bash them in the head with this. And it sucks. It just sucks. Cause look, it has a wide spread, but the thing is, its spread is completely unpredictable. Look, now it shoots above, now it shoots in the middle, and now it shoots to the left. Like, that's the thing, that's, that's the annoying thing about this, and it doesn't even do much damage either. So it's more like a, like, crowd control or something. It's a pretty trash weapon, but cool looking weapon. And, Piritsuka's good old Betsy. Anoka PT-32, a carbine plasma rifle. So it looks, there's the wave shaper. Cooler. Handle. And, you know, yeah, there, there's, the can, there's the canister. You basically sl slide it right in like a, like a gas canister. And it's very accurate. Super accurate. And it does medium damage, of course. It's like it's your starter weapon. <laughs> and
and then we have the last one. Pretty much the very first gun I created when I started Serahipt. It's the same type, an Anoka PT-13 carbine plasma rifle. Cooler, slot for the canister, handle, and this thing is very bad. Look at that ridiculous spread. It's pretty good. Then, it just... And those were all of the weapons.